You ready to go? Okay, so I'm just just to introduce myself, Mark Lynch is my name, and uh, I've been teaching maths and applied maths since 2001. Uh, my, I was lucky, fortunate enough maybe to, to do applied maths for the Leave Cert in 1996, and after I did uh, Leave Cert applied maths, I went on and did a degree in chemical engineering. But I knew, I, I knew basically probably probably from about the second month and fifth year that I always wanted to be a maths and applied maths teacher. So here I am anyways. So the first, so, so, and so part of this talk tomorrow is, sorry, part of this talk this morning is going to be about some of the problems I had actually, I haven't done very well at Leaving Cert Applied Maths in 1996, maybe some of the problems I've had teaching the existing course. And why I was really passionate about this morning is I'm going to try and convince you why a lot of those problems just are, I don't think are there anymore. Like I think what we have now is a much broader uh, applied maths course and a, an awful lot more manageable applied maths course. And I would say maybe a more exciting, all right, now don't get me wrong, um, I, still I still love my mechanics, all right, and what's on the existing applied maths course. But I think, I think from a student's pr perspective, I think a lot, of the, a lot of the newer stuff, which I'll talk about maybe in 15 or 20 minutes when I get around to it, uh, I think the students will enjoy it maybe more so than maybe some of the stuff we, we, we have we have presently. Okay, so I'm going to share a screen with you. All right, just bear with me for two seconds. Okay, one second. Okay, so just can we all see this, what I have here at the moment, just is the one note coming up on? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about, so I, I probably started teaching applied maths. I, I started teaching in Monkstown back in 2001 and, uh, before I had a dip, I did a dip in 02, 03, and there was an applied maths teacher in my old school in Monkstown, a guy called John Rafter, a fellow who helped me an awful lot with some of the, my teaching of applied maths uh, when I first started teaching. So I, so I couldn't actually, I wasn't able to teach applied maths in my own school because John was there. So I went off and I, I started teaching applied maths in another school after school. So... I'm going to just have a look at, we're going to look at some of the existing topics on the applied maths course. And some of those topics are still there in the new applied maths course, but the existing applied maths course really could be called mechanics, all right, or mathematical physics, all right? Because there isn't, outside of that, there, like that's really what, what's, what's on the existing applied maths course. And the new applied maths course, probably about 40% is mechanics. All right, so we're just going to have just have a quick look at the topics on it. So linear motion, all right, relative velocity. Now, relative velocity is one of those topics. I, I spend about six, six weeks teaching this in sixth year, and relative velocity is one of the topics that I, I didn't fully get, I'll be perfectly honest with you, when I was a student myself in 1996, and I didn't get it when I was, I didn't fully, I wasn't fully happy with it when I was doing mechanics in first year engineering too. So it's a, a particularly difficult topic. And there is some potentially challenge and differentiation on it. Mm -hmm. Next thing, we'll just have a quick, quick look at projectiles, which is, it, so there, thankfully the relative velocity, although when I mastered it, I found it very enjoyable. Unfortunately, not all students got it. Um, projectiles is the, the next topic. So there's two type of questions. There's flat planes, all right, which are on the new applied maths course and on the existing applied maths course, there's incline planes. And the problem with the incline planes is since project maths came in, students really struggle with the trigonometric manipulation or the manipulation of formula. They really have to be know how to manipulate cos 2a, all the variations of it, 2 cos squared a minus 1, 1 minus 2 sine squared and all that stuff. They need to be pretty comfortable to be able to manage these questions. All right. And again, there can be nasty differentiation. So in the new applied maths course down here, we only have flat planes. So this topic in the new applied maths course is I would be thinking mm -hmm. at, at least halved, all right? Uh, the next topic is Newton's law. So that's still in the new applied maths course. So there's, there's three challenging type of questions, all right? On movable pulleys, relative acceleration and wedges, all right? And a lot of the times when students come out of the leave insert, they kind of say, geez, there was no wedge. All right, great. All right, so wedges was one of the really difficult topics. So they removed relative velocity. So 
I think it's fairly safe to, to assume that there's going to be no relative or there's no questions on relative acceleration or wedges either. So this topic, again, has been really reduced. All right. In the new applied math syllabus. Impacts and collisions are still there on the new applied math syllabus. They're generally not really a problem. OK, and question six on the existing applied maths course is simple harmonic motion. So it's a split topic. So there's two topics in question six. All right. So the, the existing applied maths course, the, the, the gen, most teachers, I think, would, would do maybe eight of the 10 topics. All right. And the students have to do six in the exam. So it's a split topic. It's a split question usually. So there's simple harmonic motion, right, which again has difficult, can have potentially difficult uh, trigonometric manipulations and are circular motion. And I've been teaching this topic for probably the last 17 or 18 years. And most students find the circular motion a lot more, a lot easier than the simple harmonic motion. All right. There's really only a certain number of questions they can ask on circular motion. There's a lot more variation in simple harmonic motion. So I would kind of say the simple harmonic motion definitely. The more difficult side of this question is gone. So we have since so we have circular motion still down here in our new course, and the simple harmonic motion is gone. Now statics is is not on the new course, thankfully. So statics. So when I learned Liebenstert, when, when I sat my Liebenstert in 1996, statics was one of the topics that I taught. Jesus, I'm uh, you know I, I was really comfortable in school, but some of the questions that seemed to come up in the Liebenstert, there were just particularly some I'd probably say seven out of ten of the questions that would come up every year would be fine but the other three were awful so when I started teaching back in 03 with applied maths I after looking at a few years of statics I was thinking you know what I need to start learning a new question maybe so moments of inertia all right which isn't on the new course all right moments of inertia is one of those questions I decided so was an applied maths teacher that same applied maths teacher I was talking to Monkstown. So he convinced me, he said, listen, Mark, he said, statics, I'm not sure. Uh, he had a lot more years of teaching applied maths than me. So he was, he, so he, he kind of told me, listen, statics, I tell my own students, I'm not certain that they're going to be able to do the question. So he, he advised me to have a look at moments of inertia. So in the summer of 2004, I studied moments of inertia myself. So I got out Oliver Murphy's old book. And I it spent I spent about 18 hours, I remember roughly. I try try and record these amount of time. So I spent 18 hours trying to learn the topic moments of inertia. And then I did try to do the last 20 years of leave insert questions on moments of inertia, which I think probably took me about eight to ten hours. And I had about six questions on moments of inertia. So maybe some of the other problems learning some of the old stuff, if you look at the the the, the NC or say the SEC solutions, the solutions in applied maths, they're not exhaustive. So you could look at you, like if you print out an, uh, a maths paper or let's say an old one prior to maybe 2011 or 2012 or 2011 project maths came in, the, the maths papers could be 30, 30 or 35 pages long. The applied maths ones seem to be maybe 10 or 11 pages. The, 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 so the solutions are definitely not exhaustive. It just seems to maybe skip a lot of steps. But So I didn't find them particularly helpful. So when I really struggled with moments of inertia, I kind of, or with some of the questions, I needed to find someone maybe that had more of an idea than me before I, before I felt, you know what, I'm going to be comfortable going off somewhere and maybe teaching someone or teaching it in some other school. All right. So luckily I had that person at the time. And really, if I didn't have that person, I would never have been fully confident. All right. Teaching this topic. All right. But moments of inertia, again, is one of those topics that's gone and hydrostatics is also gone. All right. So probably the top questions that I would find haven't taught this for 17 or 18 years like uh, the, pr the problems we, we were having with the existing applied math syllabus is a lot of the students are really finding any questions with difficult trigonometry they're finding really challenging okay and any questions with, dif with difficult calculus they're finding really challenging now the last question just before I move on the differential equations that question kind of changed in applied maths in 20, maybe from 2011 on with project maths, when there wasn't, well, when they removed, let's say, integration using substitution, that was removed from our existing maths course. So that kind of had 
I think maybe a negative consequences for our question 10. And it kind of reduced the number of questions we were maybe able to ask or the students were able to do. So we were looking at questions previous or uh, before 2011 and we're kind of thinking, well, would they be able to answer that question or how much is on and maybe how much is not on? And luckily with the new applied math syllabus, all those questions before 2011 are on because with the new applied math syllabus, they've brought in some maths topics and integration using substitution and integration by parts have been reintroduced on the new applied math syllabus. So we'll roll on to the new applied math score. So this is a broad outline. So the mechanics section of it, I think is roughly about 40%. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you is, so let's imagine you're new to this and you never looked at it before. You definitely have an awful lot more so most of these topics, all right, the linear, now, now the other side of it too, if you, if you decide to maybe go teaching it, so this is, I, I, I discuss, I spent a fair amount of time now uh, using this book over the summer, all right, because I'll be honest you, looking at the syllabus, some of these, the, the name of some of these new topics really meant nothing to me. So I would have spent, it, I, I, and I'll discuss all that stuff later. So definitely if you're new, all right, and you decide to go teach in applied maths. Like, so generally most people start with maybe vectors at the start and linear motion is maybe not, don't expect that by just go, maybe studying a chapter yourself that you're going to be able to teach all of that chapter straight away. So I would generally start in fifth year. So I would start with, so at the moment I, with my fifth years, I've gone through linear motion, projectiles, all right, and Newton's law, Newton's law and connected particles, but I've only done ordinary level in those topics. And I won't do any, any really, well, maybe I, I'll do higher level in some of these topics, but what I'm really trying to say is the amount of mechanics we have on the new syllabus, all right, is, is it's, it's a very reduced amount of mechanics and it's definitely a lot more manageable. So all the topics are really heavy trigonometry. Those topics have really been, re they, they're actually gone really. So there's nothing like if we take even the projectiles, we only have flat planes. So there's really only the only trigonometric manipulation I can think of for flat planes is sine two a's two sine a cos a. There is really not there, there, there's I can't see that there's an, there's going to be any difficult trigon, trigonometry here. So let's say if we take a topic like projectiles, I think maybe. I don't like I'm finished that topic now in ordinary level. So I'm going to have very little. I very little. Now I will wait to have trigonometry done done in, in, in maths before I completely finish it. But I don't think it's good. Like if the, the students understand the concept in, in ordinary level, they're not really the, the maths won't be a problem for them. All right. When I just finish out, I've probably 80% of the topic already done. So the topic has been hugely reduced, right? since it inclined planes has been reduced. And I can see that there's any possibility that the, the students will have to differentiate in that question. Uh, the next topic, just have a quick look at, is the Newton's law. So again, and connected particles. Again, this topic has, there's two of the three kind of difficult questions that they've asked at higher level. They've been removed. So this, again, is a lot more manageable. Um, the impacts and collisions is more or less the same. The circular motion, again, there's only a limited amount of questions and the differential equations. The great thing about teaching the differential equations is most students will feel when they're doing this topic, they're just doing maths, all right? And when I'm doing this topic, I say, well, this is great revision for your maths. And I always find definitely where I'm teaching now down in, in Moat, right? There was really no applied maths teacher before I came there. A lot of the other maths teachers would say to me, Jesus, I'm finding, well, the students that are doing applied maths with you, their calculus is way better all right, then, then the students that don't do applied maths. OK, so my advice to you is, well, the mechanics, it's definitely more manageable. Like, I don't think for anyone that maybe hasn't looked at this stuff before and is interested in teaching applied maths, most of the difficult parts of mechanics has been removed. All right. And the stuff we have left over is an awful lot more manageable. OK, so let's look at the new, the newer stuff. All right. That's so. The next thing I want to just have a quick look at is the maths topics. So on the new applied math syllabus, there is differentiation and integration. 
All right, so integration by substitution and integration by parts, which was removed uh, in the old, uh, when project maths came in, all right? This is back on the leave insert applied maths course. So there's rates of change and some other parts in our maths course. So this stuff won't be a problem, but obviously I wouldn't go near any of this stuff until, I wouldn't go near any of this stuff until the students have it done in maths, all right? Uh, another part of, so the, another maths topic on it, we have difference equation, all right? So there's first and second differences, which they've, uh, which they've seen for the Gina cert. There's reoccurrence relationships, and there's difference equations where if, if you taught Leibniz or higher level maths before, uh, before project maths, you might remember doing difference equations. So those difference equations were second order homogeneous difference equations. And there's a few other, and to be perfectly honest with you, I would think difference equations is probably going to be one of the trickier topics. Right, so some of the more difficult questions on difference equations that really need to have studied sequence series. So I would look at, again, I would think when I'm teaching this, the students will think a lot of the time they're just doing maths and it's, but I wouldn't go, I probably would leave difference equations till six year until they've all their sequence series done and financial maths where modeling probably at that stage isn't going to be a problem. So I would think of, in the new applied math syllabus, I would think difference equations are going to be one of the more difficult topics. But again, it's very manageable, all right? If you're confident teaching higher level maths, you'll manage difference equations. Okay, now, the last thing I looked at is, well, I'll talk with the model, modeling project in a few minutes. So the last thing, or so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is what's completely new to everyone, all right? So, if we just look at the topics anyways, networks and graphs. The first time I heard about networks and graphs was about three years. I'm an Irish, apply, uh, I'm on the IMTA committee. So maybe when I went to, I can't remember where I went to Galway Cork or Dublin at the time, there was a, uh, there, there, there was the chairman at the time, Joe McEnany, giving a talk on networks and graphs. So when I looked at, so when I saw, well, this is what he's going to be talking about, I honestly really hadn't a clue what, are we going to be connecting stuff together? Or are we going to be drawing graphs? Or what the hell are we going to be doing? So, so, and so networks and graphs. So a network is basically it could be a set of points joined. So and some points could be joined together using lines. But it, it's not a a lot of the time it's not a tidy looking. Uh, it could be just seven or eight points. With, so, with some points connected, all right? The points in applied, in applied maths are called nodes and the lines that connect them are called arcs or edges, all right? So this is completely new to anyone. So by just looking at this stuff, it, it, it might seem different than what it is, but all these topics, networks, and, so this is what I would have spent. So I, this year I supervised the Leaving Cert in Northwest Dublin. And luckily for me, very few people turned up for the exam. So. I spent 10 days studying uh, the two new topics, all right, that are completely new to everyone. So there's two chapters in this textbook, all right? So Netters and Graphs is one. So this is Oliver Murphy's new applied maths books, or uh, new applied maths book. And the other topic, I'll talk about some of these topics down here. But a lot of this stuff, and th there's two algorithms in, uh, so there, you learn a lot of stuff I definitely hadn't seen any of this stuff until about three years ago. And there's two very basic algorithms, all right? Prims, uh, Kruskal's and Prim's algorithm. And what they're very useful is, let's say we have seven towns and you want to connect them together using uh, a cable, maybe to set them all up with broadband. You can find out the minimum amount of cable. You, so let's say you might have the distance be, be, between certain amount of towns and you might use them to figure out the minimum amount of cable you need to connect all the towns. So, and I'd be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't like, even without using these algorithms, so the algorithms are pretty good, but even without using the algorithms, probably a good second year would be able to do these, some of the questions in this topic without using these algorithms. But when they do see the algorithms, it's a lot more efficient way of being able to do these problems. But I'd be perfectly honest with you, a lot of this stuff, the networks and graphs chapter in the book, I think nearly you could teach this top, you could teach a lot of the stuff. There's matrices in it, multiplying and addition, addition of matrices. 
and you, you'll get to deal you'll get to see a, a lot of new things like trees minimum spanning trees and there's a lot of walk cycles and it may, may be a bit word heavy i i felt at the start but there's all these topics in this chapter are very manageable so i thought i'll be honest yet this stuff was it was grand but maybe was it as exciting as what we've done in the past i was thinking maybe it's all right but i'll be honest yet, i wasn't blown away uh, studying this stuff but it was grand okay so anyone i don't think anyone will really have a problem uh, th this is a very manageable chapter let's say all right so after that, I probably spent about two or three days, but in fairness, I had seen the algorithms, the Kruskal's and Prim's algorithm going to the Applied Maths conferences, right? And, they, and we, we, we had had demonstrations of someone, you know, going through, going through these algorithms. So these algorithms really weren't a problem for me when I was trying to figure them out anyways. So the next chapter I had a look at, right? This is a lot more, I think, a lot more exciting chapter and, Many of these things, I'd be perfectly honest, yeah, I was absolutely blown away by. So this is what I think is the most exciting part of the new applied maths course. And I'm, I'm, I'm really fascinated by it and I just can't wait to teach it. Okay, so uh, first of all, the chapter starts off with this Dijkstra's algorithm. And to be perfectly honest, yeah, most of the time what I did when I was trying to study the last chapter in applied maths, I'd start off with looking at the example, then trying to do the example myself. And I'd be perfectly honest with you, I came and stuck with Deutsch's algorithm. I just couldn't figure out from the example exactly what to do. And I was thinking, well, Jesus, I don't have my old applied maths teacher in my old school to help me out. What am I going to do? So I hit the YouTube videos, all right? So a lot of this stuff, and um, I'd also be, we, we, going to the applied maths uh, conferences, uh, um, I was advised maybe to get a book on before, if you wanted to have a look at some of these topics, get a book from uh, the A-level course on the, so if you do the A-levels in the UK and you do a section called decision maths, so a lot of this, these topics are in decision maths, so I got a book on Amazon and decision maths, so that maybe helped me a small bit too, but two of the topics I, so, so I started off with Deitchko's algorithm. So I looked at the example in the book, tried to do the example myself, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it. So I looked up a few videos on Deutschke's algorithm. So Deutschke's algorithm, is, it's a more complex algorithm, algorithm than the two previous algorithms. And let's say, for example, you had the London underground, and you knew, let's say, the distance between, all right, a, like, so let's say you have to travel from one side of London, maybe to the other side of London, you might have to change, you might have to change lines three or four different times. So Deutschke's algorithm will is an algorithm that, that would that would help you find out uh, the quickest me method, maybe, or the shortest distance between any two points. But it will also be able to tell you, let's say if, if you, it, it's a definitely more complex algorithm than the previous two, but it will also be able to tell you the shortest distance between any two stations. So it's, it's not one, it, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a bit more complex at the start, but once you get used to it, once you watch a video or two and practice a few of them, you're fine. And one of the huge things I found about studying this stuff, so generally when I got the grasp of it, again, I tried to do the example again, then I generally did the first question in each exercise, maybe I went on to question four and did the last two. All right, so that seemed to work out fine for the first topic. So the next thing I had a look at, so the next topic in the chapter is actually critical path analysis. And one of the difficult things is uh, being able to draw an activity chart. All right, so an activity is basically just a task. It could be building a wall. It could be putting a roof on a shed. So, or planning a project. So a, a critical path analysis about is, is really about planning, plan, or like planning projects. And this is something, so the first two, the, the first two sections in, in, this, in this chapter, I kind of be, became a bit on, I actually had a bit of trouble with them. But again, when I hit the YouTube videos, it didn't seem to be a problem. So I maybe spent an hour or two looking at some YouTube videos and then, but I would think of this last chapter, of, of this 
chapter, uh, um, I would think the, the activity charts are something that's probably the most difficult part of it. And even if the students don't get the activity or, or they're struggling to draw the activity charts, it doesn't really affect them doing the rest of the chapter, all right? So the other parts of the chapter are critical activities and critical paths. We'll just give you a quick idea of what a critical path is. So let's say, for example, if you're building, if you're, if you're trying to complete a project. So let's take a project of maybe building a house. All right. So let's say the, the, the activities that you can do with no, with there's, so if you, so obviously if you're trying to build a house, you're trying to build it in the quickest amount of time. So the activities you could do that there that you want to have no gap in between are the critical are the critical activity so let's say maybe pouring a foundation building the walls then putting a roof on the house all right so they're ones you could probably do without no gap between whereas let's say if you were hiring an electrician all right you could bring him in maybe after you have the walls up and but if he doesn't come straight away so there's a certain so a lot of these topics in this chapter I would find are really beneficial for someone that's trying to plan a project or trying to complete a project. So I found these topics really, really interesting. And when I was driving home from supervising the, the leave insert in Dublin, I actually rang a lot of, so I studied chemical engineering myself. So I rang a lot of engineers and I, I was on my way home or guys I went to college with. And I said, uh, so I was explaining to them what I was studying in my new, in the new applied maths course. And had they ever come across Gantt charts, all right, or some of the stuff we use for scheduling? So Gantt charts are just, are, it's, it's basically a chart where you put the critical activities at the top and it just helps you maybe figure out, uh, it, or just, it, it, it helps you really plan on a project. And these are really useful tasks or these are really useful for someone that's maybe planning a project to build a hospital or, or this kind of thing. So, and it, it kind of, it, it's, and Gantt charts, all they are, they're, so, and Gantt charts, they're very simple to do, all right? And when you have planned a project, the next thing you, you might come on to is what scheduling is. So you're, you're, you're trying to figure out the minimum amount of time or the minimum number of people you need to complete the project, all right? So there's plenty of useful stuff in, in the book about this stuff. So I, I found these topics really interesting and really useful. And if, again, I watched a couple of YouTube videos on it and a lot of this stuff on critical activities, they're actually also doing these in the A-levels in the UK. All right, so, and it, it's just, it's really nice stuff and it's very manageable stuff. So I, like, again, I was talking about maybe relative velocity. So some top students never get this stuff. I don't think any student that's doing higher level maths will have any problem really. They may have problems drawing the activity diagrams, but they won't have any problems doing the Gantt charts or they shouldn't really have any problems doing the scheduling. So the last topic in the chapter is using Bellman's principle of optimality or dynamic programming, all right? So I'll be perfectly honest with you, when I was doing these questions on dynamic programming, again, I hit the example, all right? I tried to redo the example and then I did some questions in the chapter. and. I found this uh, dynamic program and all right, I, again, when I just looked at dynamic program and I was thinking, Jesus, am I going to be going into a, a, a computer room and I am maybe going to have to learn some code again that I learned maybe 25 years ago. There's no, there, there, there's no, um, there's no real computers or IT in, in, in the new applied math syllabus. And I found this dynamic program and I found this maybe probably the, the most exciting of all the topics. And I was really blown away doing these problems. Like, you know, there, there's loads of problems with uh, stock control, how you might manage a warehouse. And I, I just found when I was doing these questions, it may, may have took me 20 minutes to do, but my mind was working really fast. And the, the, a lot of these questions, they're, they're really cool questions. Right, they, I know I could talk so much, uh, I could talk a lot more about them, but they'll really mean nothing to you unless you have a shot at trying to do this stuff yourself. So, but I was just absolutely blown away with the dynamic program. I didn't realize that you could probably do questions like this using mathematics, and there's no real difficult mathematics in it, but these topics will absolutely blow your mind, okay? 
So I would think this, this, a lot of these topics, all right? So this is, is what I'm really excited about in the new applied maths course, this stuff here. I, 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 and I will definitely teach. I think I, I should have no problem finishing all this networks and graphs and all the new, the stuff that's brand new to everyone, all right? I, will, I should have no problem teaching this stuff, all right, in fifth year. I don't think they, they, they don't need to be accepted. They don't need to have a really good level of any part of maths, all right? This is brand new stuff. And I think, I think if, you, if you have a go doing it, all right, you're definitely not going to regret it. But the only way, you, it, like, there's no point going off and learning a few or just watching maybe YouTube videos on it. You need to, you, you need to sit down and manually try to do it. So how long did, it, so I was discussing earlier on, it took me about 18 hours to, to learn moments of inertia, all right, when I, when I was learning it back in 2004, and I maybe probably spent about eight hours doing 20 years of exam questions, and then I needed to get a hand. So I think I would have probably spent networks and graphs probably about six or seven hours. Now I did have a, have a help at the start, but this last section, I would probably think 15 hours. I would think if you spend, if, you, if, you're, if you're fairly comfortable teaching Leaving Cert higher level maths, or even if you haven't taught it before, if you're comfortable with the topics on it, I think you'll master this stuff, all right? In 15 hours, all right? And again, it's probably going to be difficult to find someone that knows, like maybe that knows more about this stuff than you. So I would find YouTube is a huge help. And Oliver Murphy, who has written the book, has some lovely videos on this stuff if you're stuck. All right. So the new stuff I would look at, which is the maths, the maths topics and networks and graphs and all this stuff I have down here, I would say that's probably 40% of the new syllabus. Okay. So the last thing I'll talk about, which I haven't thought so much about, is the mathematical modeling, modeling project. So again, in Oliver's book, he has a chapter on the mathematical modeling project, and he has given us an example. So it's kind of like when we were learning to see when we were, went to talks on the class-based assessment on maths. So maybe doing a project in maths is, or is pretty daunting, but... When we got a few examples of maybe the problem solving task or the statistics uh, uh, task that the student or the CBA that the students have in second and third year, all right, we felt a lot more comfortable with doing with doing this stuff. So, the, but the mathematical modeling project. So, in, in the book, he goes through a mathematical Oliver goes through a mathematical pro modeling project, and he also gives a suggestion for students. To, to maybe try and do a mathematical project themselves in fifth year, all right? So probably in the last, in the last term of fifth year, I'll have a go at, at some mathematical, problem, uh, mathematical modeling project. But in sixth year, the mathematical modeling project is, will be given what to do the mathematical project on. So it won't be one that you'll just make up yourself. The SEC will give us this one in the first term in sixth year. And the mathematical project will be the same for students doing ordinary level or students doing higher level. But again, I think it's only 20%. And, and one of the things I found from definitely doing the CBA in, or the CBA in maths in school is the students are a lot better at research and stuff than I am anyways. So I would be thinking the less you, you maybe the less you do with them when, when you're maybe doing a trial project, I think the better they would be may be prepared when you're actually doing the one in sixth year, okay? So just to put it, so, so just to finish up before I take any questions or I'd hope I'd be able to answer, I might be able to answer them all, but so really what I'm trying to say this morning is if you want to teach this new, if, if you're confident teaching higher level maths, all right, or you think you'd be, or maybe you haven't taught it, but you think you would be confident in teaching higher level maths and you want to teach or you're interested in teaching applied maths. I don't think in the past, I would say, you know what, unless you have, unless you maybe did it in school or you came from a physics or engineering background, you're going to have a fair amount of pain. All right. Uh, teaching the, the existing Leibniz Cert applied maths course, like some of the stuff, like 
in, in, even when I started teaching in 2003 and some of the topics that I, I, I was comfortable with myself, I was kind of maybe leave some questions out. There's a, a fair few oddball questions, all right, to be perfectly honest. With you. So, and I even tell my students, you know, it, I, I'm sit, I actually sit the leave insert myself just as soon as I get the paper every year. And I've been doing this since 2003. I try and do the exam myself. So I've been trying to do about nine questions since about 2003 or 2000, well, eight before I learned moments of inertia and nine since then. And I'd be perfectly honest with you, I can't all, I can, I always tell my students, you know what? I'm not always sure I'm going to get nine perfect. And sometimes I just can't do a half a question. But the, the new applied math syllabus, I d definitely don't think you're going to have that problem. So my advice to you is, if you've never taught applied maths before, or even if you haven't done applied maths, uh, uh, maths before, this is an awful lot more manageable of a syllabus. And it's, I, I think it's a, it's a really exciting syllabus, all right? And if, if, you, if you think you'd be comfortable teaching leaving cert higher level maths, I don't see that you're going to have a huge issue teaching this. And from a kid's point of view, I think a lot of them, like, 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 some of the topics, like when I finished doing some of the topics in, in sixth year at higher level, I kind of say, you know what, guys, if you want to feel really comfortable at this topic, you need to spend maybe six to eight hours. All right. Practicing questions, maybe do try and do 10, 10 to 12 years of questions. I don't think I'm going to have to say that to, uh, anymore. So I don't think I'm going to lose. Like I usually would start off with, I'm in most community school now, and I generally start off with 17 students and end up with somewhere between about eight and 11 students. I don't think I'm going to, I, I don't think there's going to be as much of a fall off as maybe what there has been in the past. Like I would have said the applied math syllabus in the past, it's just not, it's, it, it wasn't made, it's definitely not made for anyone, for everyone. But the new applied math syllabus is a hell of a lot more manageable. And I think it's definitely more enjoyable and more exciting from a student's point of view, all right? And it really sets them up. Like there's, and like a lot of this stuff, the critical path analysis, this stuff is super for business, all right, also. And I'm really blown away with it, all right? So if anyone has any questions, all right, feel free to ask me, all right? But that's about it anyways. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I just say for, I'm coming in from exactly what you were saying. I've never thought of before. I did it back in the 80s myself. I'm I'm very I'm anxious about it, but you've given me great um, hope and enthusiasm towards it. So thank well, you. Well, be, I'd be perfectly honest with you, Susan, right? Yeah. I was I was pretty anxious myself, you know, so I'm re really in a school. So I, I have a 19 month old now and a three and a half month old. So I was kind of when this new thing came in, I would probably be managed like I haven't taught since I've I'm seven years now in, in the school I'm in. And yeah. one of the good things I've I, I haven't had to teach any. I don't like teaching any transition year maths because I think transition year, a lot of them, there's a, you know, they're not, they're not too interested in listening to me at that stage and they <laughs> want to have the crack and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So i be honest, yeah, I was thinking, right, okay, I have two options here. You know, I can kind of go to the principal and, and vice principal saying, saying, you know, this applied math syllabus, it's, it's too hard. It's too different. Uh, yeah. Do you know what? I don't think we should bother teaching this anymore. And the chances are they probably would have said grant. Yeah, you know, but and and when I was when I, when I I be honest, you, the, the networks and graphs, I don't think isn't going to be a problem. But I but yeah. I listened to like last year at the IMTA conference, Oliver Murphy Oliver Murphy went through uh, some of this dynamic program, and and I hadn't looked at any of this stuff before, and it and and it meant absolutely nothing to me. And I was yeah. thinking, Jesus, am I ever going to get my head around this stuff? Yeah. But when I did put in the time. I thought this stuff was, I, I'd be perfectly honest with you, I couldn't get over. Yeah, yeah. I was just absolutely amazed. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I was thinking, like, uh, like usually when I finish supervising the Leaving Cert, driving up and down to Dublin for 10 or 11 days, I'm completely depressed. And I, I, I was, I just, I couldn't get over how energized I was. And I couldn't be believe how excited I was about some of this new stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the kids are going to be blown away 
like when if you do a question on dynamic on, on using dynamic programming, it's probably going to take you about 20 minutes. Your mind is going to be is going to be racing in a really nice way. It's this stuff is absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. And and yeah. I think the kids, like I just can't wait till I teach this. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I really mean that. You know, and I, I think like what we really have to think about it is the mechanics for anyone who's me- never taught it before. It's not okay, it's not what it was. All right. And I, I the other side of it, I think, is like the Leaven Cert exam at the moment, the algebra on it, I think, is is definitely a bit too heavy. But we now have a, we now have a much broader syllabus. And I don't think the algebra on the new applied maths on the new applied maths course, I can't see how it could be as heavy, all right, with a much broader syllabus. Mm. And that's that, that's and, and we can kind of see that like we have a much broader, we have a broader applied or maths course than we have. And definitely the algebra when the kids go in and do the exam is is definitely not as difficult as it was. Yeah. And, and, well, and the enthusiasm is lovely, Mark. Thanks a million. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. All the best, guys. Thank you for listening.